everybody. Welcome to Excel Video 324. I'm Nate Moore. I was helping a group yesterday track their copays, how many copays were collected and how many should have been collected. So we were doing things like analyzing what the insurance was and whether it was like Medicare or Medicaid and they didn't require a copay, what the global period was and was this visit inside a global period for a prior procedure, all that kind of stuff, so that they can better manage their front desk and make sure they're collecting the copays they should. When you're ready to do a similar analysis for your practice, I'd love to help you. I want to show you something today that you might see as a bug the first time you see it. If you go into the data and let's go through and take all the primary insurance and replace it with, let's say, oh, I don't know, let's make patient commercial insurance. And we're just going to replace all. Excel is happy. Clarity says commercial insurance. And you've watched enough of these videos to know that this won't change until I refresh the data. Now it says commercial insurance. I, I centered these a long time ago, so it keeps wanting to center them. And we can go back and say, no, 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 I don't need them centered. Just do that. I'm happy. The interesting thing is clearly it's commercial insurance. We got that part right. But watch what happens when you look here. See how I've got Medicare, Aetna, Blue Cross, Medicaid. There's commercial insurance, but I still have patient in there. I have an old deleted item, deleted field that I'm never going to use again, let's say. Let's say a doctor changed their name or the location changed the name. I'm never going to see patient again. I'm only going to see commercial insurance. Why, Excel, do you keep putting an old field in my drop-down list that just kind of clutters it up, especially if I've got a bunch of these and I've got stuff I'm never going to see again. I want to get rid of them. Here's how to do it. Yeah. <laughs> it really, really, really wants. And you know what? It, it, oh, i got to select them all. Uh, if again we could go back here to options and preserve cell formatting we can do some things like that but what I want to show you today is the data tab on the data tab see where it says retain items deleted from the data source number of items to retain you can choose between automatic max and what we want which is none when we change it to none I've given up I'll just you want you want them centered Excel they'll be centered now, it's still here, and you think, dang it, Nate, what happened? Let's refresh the data, and then, finally, patient goes away. So what's, the, what's going on? When we initially had patient in my list of uh, primary insurance, Excel kept the list of that in the dropdown and maintained it even after we switched from patient to commercial insurance, and it maintained it until we went into options data and said if we delete items from the data source I don't want you to retain any of them make that none and once that's none and you refresh the data then Excel will come back and take those unused deleted items off of this drop-down list that's what's going on there in this data tab are a couple other things the what if analysis applies to OLAP things we're not going to go there Refresh data when opening the file is helpful if you've got a data source outside of your spreadsheet and you want to look at that data source and refresh your data every time you open the spreadsheet. We can do that by checking this box. Enable show details. Um, if you check that and normally it's checked, when you check it, it will let you double click and see the detail. If it's unchecked, like I had it a minute ago, when you double click, you can't change this part of a pivot table. It turns off the ability to show the details. I don't see that mu as much of a security feature because, again, somebody that knew that could go in, change the pivot table options, and do it unless you protected the spreadsheet. So be a little careful with that. This save source data with file, in theory, saves the data that you pulled in from an outside source with the file. I've done this for a client, and we've got a lot of trouble. It's, it's, this one's buggy. This one doesn't necessarily, it'll save the source data, but you can't get at it. You can't um, find your way through to it. It's weird when you um, save. I, don't rely on this one either. But do rely. Do rely on retain items deleted from the data source when you want that patient to go away once you've changed the name. As long as you change number of items to retain per field to none, you'll be good to go. A couple other quick things. Some printing options here if you want to repeat row labels on each printed page. If you've got 30 or 40 or 140, rows going down in your pivot table and you want those row labels on each printed page you can do something like that um, you can set some print titles and print the expand collapse buttons if you need to alt text is just 
what will happen if you've got folks that are visually impaired that have a tough time seeing, you can do that. Hope that's helpful for you. Thanks for watching.